Hello and welcome to the AutoGPT full install tutorial. If you have any questions throughout this process, I am here to hold your hand through it as there's many terms that may be unfamiliar. Go ahead and leave a comment down below with your question and I will try and remain extremely active. Now in order to do this, there's two prerequisites that we need to install on our device. These will be listed down below corresponding link 1 and link 2 in the description of this video. The first one is Git, and that will be in link 1 in the description down below. When you open Git, or the link, you'll be directed to this page. Simply go to the right side of this page and click on Download for Windows. This tutorial does only work in Windows, but it can be translated to Mac OS users as well. Once you've downloaded Git, the next thing we need is Python. Python is the coding language that we're going to use to actually run AutoGPT, but you don't need to know anything about coding or the language itself, as once you get directed to this page, which will be link 2 in the description down below, go ahead and just hover over downloads. Now, go to the right, and where it says Python 3.11.3, we're going to go ahead and click on that. This will start our download. Now, if you're watching this video down the road, this will be the same steps, but this may be a newer version. This downloads dropdown, and this right here is what you need. So let's go ahead and open up this installer because there's something very specific in the install process we need to ensure we do. Go ahead and open that, and you'll be directed to this window. Now this is the important part. At the very bottom, there's something that says add python.exe to path. Now you don't need to know why, and you don't really need to know what exactly this means. All you need to do is make sure that you check this box that says add python to path, and then click on install. Now once that install was successful, we can go ahead and close that window. We now have git and python running on our computer. So let's go ahead and close those, as we don't need them anymore. The next thing we're going to do is open up our command prompt. We can do so by going down into our search bar and typing in cmd. Go ahead and open the command prompt and it'll give you a window that looks like this. Now down below in link number 3, you're going to see something that says git clone. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy that and on this first line here we're just going to paste it. The git program that we downloaded allows us to clone a github repository. Now this right here is autogpt. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take the AutoGPT program from the GitHub code or the GitHub repository and it's going to create a file on our computer that will reference that. But now you can see here we are inside of our C drive and our users. What we want to do is actually get into this AutoGP directory. So what we're going to do is command directory or CD and then auto dash gpt and then hit enter. Once we hit enter you'll see that this line has changed. We're no longer in just our user directory, we're now inside of the auto gpt directory. Now there's a few more requirements or back end that we need to install but we can do that with one line of code. What we're going to do is type pip install oh, slash r or dash r and then we're going to go requirements if I can type requirements.txt. So that's pip space install space dash r space requirements.txt. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now you're going to see a wall of code, but don't worry. This is completely fine. This is everything that you're wanting. Now, if you error out on this section, if you get an error message and you don't see this wall, this is because during the Python install, you failed to add it to path. This pip right here, what we started it with pip, only works if the path was installed correctly with Python. All right. Now things are going to get a bit more advanced. Let's go ahead and actually open this AutoGPT in our files. So we're going to open our file folder, go down to OSC. We know that it's in users, ASIN, and then we're going to see the AutoGPT file right here. 
Go ahead and open that file and it should look something like this, a whole bunch of files. Now this is the cloned repository that we did in step one. What we're gonna notice is there is this .env .template file. Go ahead and click on that, or right click rather, and then open with your notepad. You can open this very easily just with your notepad. There's a bunch of text in here that you may not understand, and that's perfectly fine. All we need is this right here that says open API key. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to open API, or rather go to open API. Go ahead and go to open API, and create a free account. You'll notice I'm just logged in as a personal account here. And once you're inside of the home screen, on the left side, you're gonna go down to where it says user API keys. This key is gonna allow AutoGPT to communicate with GPT-4 through OpenAI to execute the commands we ask it to. Once you're here, you're gonna go ahead and just click create new secret key, create secret key, and then copy. That's all we need from that, we can go ahead and close it. Go ahead and take the API key that you just created and copied and paste it right here into open API key. Now if you're wanting more memory, say you're wanting to execute large scale plans, there's one optional thing down here, and that is the memory backend or memory backend type. And we can see that by default it's local meaning anything we generate with AutoGPT will be stored locally on our computer. But the problem with that is we can have hundreds of gigs of data being generated depending on the process we want to take with AutoGPT. To get around that, we're going to go ahead and go get a free memory backend or a vector database, and that can be done through pinecone.io. Go ahead and go to pinecone.io and sign up for free. Currently, there's a little bit of a waiting list, so you want to get signed up for free as soon as possible so we can have that memory backend. Once you do that, you'll generate an API key and just paste it right here. Again though, that's completely optional. Actually, right now, with this right here, our open API key, we're practically ready to go. Go ahead and hit file and save, and there's only one thing left to do. On this .env.template, go ahead and right click it, show more options, and rename. We want to remove the .template from the back end, leaving it just .env. Your file should now look like this, and we should be ready to go with our AutoGPT. Alright, let's go ahead and head back to our command prompt now that we have our open API key all installed, or all set up rather, and let's actually run AutoGPT. In order to do this, we're gonna call on Python. So we're gonna type Python space dash M and then auto GPT. This is using Python in our command prompt to call on the auto GPT GitHub repository that we cloned and now have locally on our computer. This should open the auto GPT terminal when we hit enter. We'll let it think for a second. And here we go. Welcome to auto GPT. Enter the name of your AI and its role below. Entering nothing will load defaults. So we're gonna go ahead and name our AI. And aptly so, we'll name this Hustle GPT. It'll then say, I am at your service, and then ask us to describe our AI's role. For this, let's say, uh, Hustle GPT is an expert in JavaScript, Python, HTML and CSS coding. The purpose of Hustle GPT is to develop web applications that fit content gaps in current trends. So we're telling the AI what its role is. We're programming our own language model to, to fit our specific needs. Once we basically tell AutoGPT what our specific GPT model is, we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now, here's where it gets interesting. This right here is setting up to five goals for your AI in which it will execute in order. 
So let's say that we really do want this to be an expert in JavaScript, Python, HTML, and CSS coding. So the purpose here is to well, develop web applications that fit content gaps. So the first thing would be to identify current trends. The second thing would be to identify content gaps within those trends. Uh, the third would be um, identify web applications that would fill needs in these trends, so on and so forth. We'll get down to goal five, where we actually tell it to develop our web application around the trend or the content gap that it found. Now I'm not going to fully execute this because AutoGPT, once given a task, can go infinitely. It can go forever until it fully develops that, and right now, I'm not wanting to develop a web app with AutoGPT. So just keep in mind, once you fill out your goals and on the final goal hit enter, AutoGPT will now be running. It will be attempting to execute everything you input above. So just know that, that once you're done putting your goals down and you hit enter on that final fifth goal, AutoGPT will be now an unstoppable force that will autonomously be running and executing commands, searching the web, creating files, executing within those files, and basically have full control over your computer and your internet access while it's working. Now this isn't to say you can't do things in the background, but it is to say, just know, once you're done putting in your goals, AutoGPT is going to take it and run with it. Again, if you had any questions, leave them down in the comment below, and I will try and get to them.